All right, our next problem here deals with actually a calorimetry problem. Um, it's not really a, a calorimeter we're dealing with, but we do have a bucket of water, uh, five liters of water. Uh, the water starts at 20 degrees centigrade, and we have a horseshoe uh, with a mass of one kilogram, which has been heated to 200 degrees centigrade. Let's say Blacksmith was doing work on it, and now wants to cool down the horseshoe by dumping it into the water, and the water then together with the horseshoe will then end up with a final temperature of 21.8 degrees centigrade. The question then is, what is the specific heat of the horseshoe? The best way to do that, and just about any calorimetry problem, is the following. Let's start out with the equation that the Q gained by all the things within the problem that are gaining heat must equal to the Q lost by all the things within the problem that are losing heat. So in this case, it's fairly straightforward. The water is gaining heat, the horseshoe is losing heat. And let's ignore the bucket. The bucket's made out of wood and it's not going to change too much in temperature. And so we can probably just ignore that. All right, Q gained, well that would be MC delta T for the horseshoe, or no, for the water, because the water is what's gaining the heat. And that has to equal to MC delta T for the horseshoe. So that's always the case. Now, sometimes we have more things in play here, and then we have to add to this equation on both sides. But here, simply straightforward, the water is gaining heat, and the horseshoe is losing heat. Now let's plug in what these things are. The mass of the uh, water would be 5 kilograms, because the uh, water has a mass of 1 kilogram per liter. So we have 5 kilograms of water times C. The C for water is 4,186 joules per kilogram per centigrade degree. And the change in the temperature would be, in this case, would be the final temperature, 21.8 degrees centigrade, minus initial temperature, 20 degrees centigrade. It doesn't matter which way it goes. It could be that the water is cooler at the end or warmer at the end. You just want the change in the temperature, and you want that always to be a positive value. So you put the final temperature minus the initial temperature in this case. So that would be 21.8 degrees centigrade minus 20 degrees centigrade. So you always want this to be a positive quantity, and the signs will work out if you do it like this. All right, we set that equal to the mass of the horseshoe, which was one kilogram, times the specific heat, and that's what we're looking for. See, that's the question. And uh, times the change in the temperature. Now, we started out at 200 degrees centigrade, and we ended up at 21.8 degrees centigrade. So that would be 200 degrees centigrade minus 21.8 degrees centigrade. Uh, let's say that uh, now we want to solve this for C. Uh, the one kilogram divided by five kilograms, so I can get rid of the one kilogram here and get rid of kilograms over there. And I'm going to divide both sides by the difference in the temperature for the horseshoe, put that over here, and then we'll end up with C. So now let's, uh, let's go over here and solve this equation for C. So right here we have C is equal to this side right here, which is five times the 4,186. That's the specific heat, that's joules per kilogram per degree centigrade, or centigrade degrees, uh, times the difference between the two, which is 1.8 centigrade degrees, and divide the whole thing by the difference here, which is 200 minus 21.8, that would be 178.2 degrees, 178.2 uh, centigrade degrees. Um, so this will cancel out with that. And that would be centigrade degrees. Okay, so that gives us uh, joules per kilogram per centigrade degrees. So the units work out. Now with my calculator, I can go ahead and figure out what that is equal to. So we have uh, 5 times uh, 4186 times 1.8 divided by 178.2 equals. And the answer is 211 joules per kilogram per centigrade degree. All right, and that would then be the specific heat of the horseshoe. Now, that's kind of low. I was hoping for something a little bit bigger than that, but of course, I didn't work it out in advance. But at least you can see how to do this problem. So let's take another look at how to do a calorimetry problem. You understand what's going on here. You have a hot horseshoe, a cold bucket of water. We're going to put the horseshoe in the water, and then we're going to have them at the end at the very same temperature because heat from the horseshoe will go into the water until both at, are at what we call thermal equilibrium or the same temperature. So we can say that the Q gained by the water equals the Q lost by the horseshoe. 
So we write MC delta T for the water and MC delta T for the horseshoe. Always make sure that the delta T is a positive quantity on both sides of the equation. So we put the mass down, the specific heat, and the change in the temperature, make sure it's positive value. And over here, the mass, the specific heat, and the change in the temperature. The only thing we don't know is the, the specific heat for the horseshoe. We then figure that out right there, and that's how you do the problem.